Has there ever been a time in your life when you faced the masterpiece that changed your life? As if your standards were raised to another level? It happened to me. Hi, I'm Erneko and welcome to this new video series about Made in Abyss. If you are subscribed to this channel, you know that my favorite game is Omori. Today, I would like to talk about my favorite anime, winner of the Crunchyroll Anime Awards 2017 for best score, but also anime of the year. How Made in Abyss made me feel, I never felt that in any other anime. What's so special with this one, it inspired me to make orchestral music last year, creating two compositions inspired by Made in Abyss, a banger, and musical analysis on the Omori soundtrack. In this continuity, I would like to pay tribute to Kevin Penkin, for his experimental and conceptual approach to music. Why Made in Abyss is a magnum opus? What makes it so special? And above all, how I fell in love with the Made in Abyss soundtrack. Discovery If you've never watched... Huh? Is there something wrong with my face? Oh yeah, right! I have a new hat! The same as the Delvers wear in this anime. Again, a big thank you to Kid Dream Zing for making this hat and other surprises that you will see later. <clears throat> Let's start again. If you've never watched Made in Abyss, here's a quick summary. On a remote island was discovered a huge pit, 1000 meters in diameter, and a depth of over 20,000 meters. This hall attracted adventurers from around the world in order to find hidden treasures and relics. But for that, they had to face dangerous creatures, an ecosystem that defy common sense and the curse that I will detail later. Many adventurers died, but that didn't stop people from venturing into the unknown. It is known as the Abyss. Ooh, needless to say, Made in Abyss got a strong world building. This was just a summary. But if you watch the show, there is so much more that makes Made in Abyss amazing. And I urge you to watch at least the first three episodes. Before tackling the soundtrack, I would like to point out that even if I did a lot of research before this video, it remains my interpretation of the Made in Abyss soundtrack. As I said in the introduction, the composer Kevin Penkin had a conceptual and experimental approach to the music of Made in Abyss. So that was about a good half of the soundtrack was just all concept. He also wanted to try some experimental things that you wouldn't typically hear in anime soundtracks. So yeah, it's a pretty difficult soundtrack to approach, but I love it so much that I wanted to talk about it. I'll try my best not to talk nonsense about Kevin Penkin's music. And to quote a character from Made in Abyss, now, I believe it is time for a new approach, free from the influence of conventional wisdom. Speaking of character, let's start with the protagonist and her theme. Rico is a young orphan living at the edge of the abyss, the only child of the legendary Liza, the Annihilator. Her father died before she was even born and her mother left her when she was two years old. Shit! Why am I telling this? The music is so joyful. Despite her situation, Rico is a joyful, energetic and ingenious character. Her dream is to become a white whistle, a legendary type of Delver. 
just like her mother. So, this is a great example of a theme. In composition, we transpose a character into instrument and leitmotif. During Kevin Penkin's masterclass last year, we learned that the piano represents Rico and the instrument is played when the character performs an action like walking or eating. But most of the time, this music is played when Rico is cooking. Anyway, there is some interesting stuff like the C minor in the intro that becomes major when the theme is played or the modulation from G major to C major with a crescendo which, unfortunately, is never played in the anime. Now, meet the person who will change Rico's life. Legu is a robot that looks like a little boy. We don't know anything about his age, his origin, and even his real name, because he has amnesia. We just know that Rico was saved by Legu, who fired a powerful laser at a dangerous creature and then passed out. Uh, we also know these arms are very durable and can extend up to 40 meters each. Despite his power, Regu is shy, naive and fearful. But he swore to protect Rico if she dives into the abyss. If Rico was represented by a piano, Regu is represented here by wind instruments more specifically, brass instruments like trombone, tuba, and French horn to represent his power. Wait, I remember the brass in his theme. Why is there none here? Because theme of Lego is never used in the anime. It is only available in the Made in Abyss original soundtrack. You can listen to on Spotify and Apple Music. I even made a Spotify playlist with the music in chronological order. And finally, the chord progression is very interesting. Because it is similar to the next song. There is so much to say about this music. And I know, this video wouldn't be enough. But thanks to this scene, it was the first time I fell in love with Made in Abyss. And this song is Hanezeve Karadina. Ah, oh, literally chills. There is a perfect harmony between the music and the visual. Kudos to Osamu Masuyama, the art director, who previously worked for Ghibli as background artist. Now, back to music. We learned during Kevin Penkin's masterclass that some songs didn't work as intended. Kevin called them mistakes in the abyss. In an early version of Hanezeve Karadina, we had acoustic drums. I don't remember the rhythmic pattern, so let's try something I have on hand, like the drums from My Hero Academia, You Say Run. Hmm, it sounded better in my head. I guess that's why he changed it. Okay, that's enough. According to Kevin, the drum wasn't great at illustrating the scene sonically. So instead, the composer opted for this. So, I have two theories about this song. Number one, theme of Legu was supposed to be played in the first episode. It was confirmed by Kevin Penkin that Hanezeve was supposed to be playing only in episode 8. If we compare the two songs, their chord progressions are very similar, and we also find the same melodic motif. Even if Kevin composed music for specific scenes, the choice of placing the music belonged to the sound director. This was a success for Made in Abyss. According to Kevin, it was fantastic placement of music, and it was an unintended win. 
theory number two. This song is a love letter to Yoko Kano, more specifically, inspired by Ghost in the Shell standalone complex, possibly the best anime OST of all time, according to this tweet. We know for Tower of God, he was inspired by the Ghost in the Shell movie, composed by Kenji Kawai. But for Yoko Kano, it could be this particular mix between the electronic drum and this classical orchestration. It could be this gibberish language, interpreted by the talented Takeshi Saito. One thing is certain, Yoko Kano greatly influenced the music of Kevin Penkin. Why Hanezeve Karadina is one of Kevin Penkin's magnum opus? Because this song is a victory as a composer. An unintended win for everyone who worked on the pilot episode and a success for Made in Abyss. Love Beware of appearances. Despite its ghibli-esque and colorful visual, the Abyss is the most dangerous place in the world. And what should be feared the most is not its extraordinary ecosystem. It's not these creatures that you will have to fight. No, the worst danger of the abyss is the curse. A series of symptoms that manifest upon ascending while inside the abyss. The further down you go, the more likely you are to die. This song is To the Abyss, the theme of the curse. The Made in Abyss soundtrack plays with light and dark. For the conceptual aspect of the music, Kevin said, it's all about trying to find a textural and visual approach to music. This is how I see it. The piano represents the human who wants to dive into the abyss, starting with an octave interval, then goes down step by step to finally land on a triton. At this moment appears some dark synthwave music representing the abyss and its curse that swallows up the piano until it disappears. Kevin really managed to create a tour de force for to the abyss. What? That sounds good, right? It seemed important to me to detail the curse of the abyss to approach the following story. Over 12 years ago, just after Liza became pregnant with Rico, she was ordered by the government to obtain the unheard bell from the fourth layer of the abyss. They had to fight against the abyss, but also against other delvers who were looking for the relic. The mission lasted over 10 months and was extremely lethal. Most of Liza's team died, including the Black Whistle, Toka, Rico's father. And in the midst of it all, she was born. That's right, Rico was born in the abyss. But how did she survive? A baby resisting the ascent of the fourth layer is unthinkable. But despite everything, she survived. Thanks to the curse repelling vessel that they brought. And thanks to the love of a mother. Before talking about this song, I would like to come back to Underground River. A shame I can't talk more about it, but it really is the perfect intro music for Made in Abyss. So, why am I talking about Underground River now? Because if we look at the chord progressions, we can notice similarities with two months, like the E flat major 7 chord and the sequence of E flat FG chords. Both songs have experimental structures. But Tumon's structure is weirder. There is no stability until the bridge. I think these two songs are related. And to support that, hear my theory. Tumon's is the expedition time in the abyss. 
Wait, wasn't it 10 months? Yes, but there is a phenomenon called time distortion. Oh shit, I'm sorry. This is a little spoiler we learn later, but it seems important for this music to know that Kevin Penkin doesn't really talk about this song. So instead, I looked for quotes from the characters and this is what I found. Don't stay in the deep layers if you don't want to kill those who are waiting for you. The abyss is inescapable. If the abyss doesn't take your life, it can take your time. And the deeper you sink, the faster time will pass. Spending 10 months in the abyss seems irredeemable. How much time would have passed on the surface? And despite all the sacrifices, Liza and her remaining team member chose to carry Rico and the box to the surface instead of the unheard bell. This song is a musical representation of the abyss time distortion. But I also interpret it as the power of a love stronger than the abyss. Unconditional love. Natsukashi. Do you feel like you've heard this song before? Even though it might be the first time you've heard it. In my case, my brain makes a connection with two other songs. The title screen of Ocarina of Time by Koji Kondo with its chords of F and C major 7. And One Summer's Day by Joey Hisaishi. Again this chord of F major 7 and the orchestration of the strings and the piano. But for now, I will stop there for the comparisons because as a musician or an artist, I know this feeling of being all the time compared to other musicians or artists. And <laughs> we hate that. But it is possible that unconsciously we may have been inspired by something. For example, childhood. In this picture, you can see some of the most important soundtracks that shaped Kevin Penkin's childhood. We can find some Yoko Kano that I mentioned previously, some Ghibli, I especially love Nausicaa, and among this Ghibli, there is Spirited Away. I understand, when you don't have music theory, you need landmarks that are familiar to you. But I would like to point out that Kevin Penkin has done a tremendous amount of research on the visual and textural approach to music. All this while having only the first four books of Made in Abyss as source material. And summing up his work to Oh, it sounds like Ghibli or Zelda would be an insult. And I'm also guilty of it. Kevin's strength is not in creating beautiful melody or harmony that sounds familiar to you. No, the real strength of Kevin Penkin is harmonization between the visual and the audible to provoke emotions. The power of remembering a particular scene, listening to a song, Hanezeve Karadina for the sunrise, two months for the birth of Rico, and finally made in abyss for the beginning of the adventure but also the end of Rico's previous life. To conclude this video, I would like to end with a statement. One of the best weapons in music is nostalgia. I'm gonna be honest, nostalgia scares me because it is such a powerful weapon that helps to remember good times but also give you this sadness. Those good times belong to the past. Nostalgia is a bittersweet emotion. And that's the feeling I get when I watch episode 3 of Made in Abyss. 
But Rico decides to move on, even if it means leaving her past behind her. Even if we never get to see each other again, we'll be connected by the abyss. I'll never forget about the time I spent up here. Rico has mourned her past and lives without regret. It was planned to title this chapter Nostalgia, but its connotation is negative. So instead, I use the Japanese word Natsukashi. It means to be nostalgic with no regrets. Thanks for watching this video! It took me three months to make. One month of research and writing. One month of struggling. At least in the meantime, I went to see Porter Robinson and Joey Hisaishi in concert. And finally, one month of recording and editing. It was said at the beginning it would be a video series. But I didn't expect a single video to take me so long. At least I was able to finish this video before the release of Made in the Beast Season 2. I can't wait to be emotionally destroyed. I was very hesitant to make this video. Firstly because Made in the Beast is a seinen, not a shonen. That means it's not suitable for young people and those who can be easily disturbed. Here a non-exhaustive list of content warnings for Made in Abyss. I will have to censor a lot of things for the following videos. But I always wanted to make this video because the music of Made in Abyss deserves more recognition. And I hope this video made you appreciate it better. Secondly, because the soundtrack is complex. I was afraid I wouldn't do the soundtrack justice by making a video on it. But while researching Kevin Penkin's interviews, I learned so many things, as much as when I attended his masterclass. Oh, I hope he doesn't mind that I shared some stuff from his masterclass, like mistakes in abyss that this kind of info made you more curious about music from anime or video games and made you want to participate in this kind of course. But at the end, it's just a theory. A music theory! Okay, I stop messing around. Thanks to Kid Dreamzing for making these new Omori icons. And this hat. Thanks to my family and friends for helping me in the making and previewing of the video and thank you again for watching this video. I don't know when the next video will be released, so see you next time!